let's see. We're going to start talking about functions, which was the whole point of Algebra 2, if you can remember. I didn't learn anything. I had Mr. Okoko. Y'all had nine functions in Algebra 2, and you spent the entire <laughs> school year learning about those nine functions. So let's see. What are those nine functions? Quadratic. Quadratic is one of them. Absolute. What? Absolute value that we did zero. yesterday. What? Is it zero? This no, but zero. you said quadratic, so what's the opposite of square is something? Cubic. Okay. Square root. Root. Cubic. What's the opposite of cubing? Well, okay, okay, so square, square root, cube, cube, cube root. root. That's what I was trying to say. Okay. <clears throat> Two of them you probably didn't see because COVID happened. That is exponentials and logs. Mm -hmm. We'll cover those after spring we were break. We're getting into exponentials, but then that's whenever we yes. select. Yeah. And then there's two more. The easy one, linear. Yeah. And then one more. One over X is a fraction. The fancy way of saying fractions is decimal. No. Another way of saying fraction is, saying we, we've fraction. talked about it a couple times. Dividends. Fractions. Start Wait, rational? rational, very good. Rational. Yeah. Yeah. So there's your nine functions we're going to talk about for the rest of the year here. Yeah, we're all fresh minded. Now. First off, what is a function? Something that can't function. A function is a math term way of saying, basically, another way of saying equation. But there's a difference between functions and equations. Functions work just like a machine. There is some input, something gets worked out here in that function factory, and then there's an output. Input, something gets calculated, output. I function notation is f of x. Normally you would see it y equals something, if you want to graph, but is, in regards to functions, we have f of x. So function of x. <laughs> Here's an example of how a function works. So uh, f of x equals x plus three. I want to find f of 2. So notice I'm replacing all of my x values with the number 2. That is going to be my input. So where x equals 2, I'm going to plug it to the machine. Come down here and work it as x plus 3, which is 2 plus 3, and I get some output 5. So input 2 gets worked out. 2 plus 3 is 5. If x was 3, go through the machine. 3 plus 3 is 6. If x was 4, 4 plus 4, 4 plus 3. Seven. So this is function. This is how it's different from an equation in a y equals, which is mostly just referring to graphing. Wait, hold on. Yes. Wait a input. Minute. So we have some input value. What is x equal? Two. You're going to plug in x for that, that input, and you're going to get some kind of value. That's okay, so output. our function is going to be f of x. Yes. And then we plug it in, we plug 2 into that form. Okay, yes, 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 yeah. yes, yes. And yes, I, yes. I mean, that's, 2 could be anything. That's what I'm going to get to next is my domain. What is my, uh, what is my total numbers that I can input here? Between, could be negative infinity to positive infinity. All real numbers I can plug into my function to work out. That is my input. Mm -hmm. Could just be from zero to infinity. Those are the only numbers. Like negative could break this function. Negative so numbers break that function? It could, depending on the function here. Oh, yeah, this plus three. So like if this was square root, a negative would break it. So only uh, positive values would come into my function. Okay. And outputs is my range. Oops. What are my set of numbers that I can get out of that function? Could be all real numbers, or it could be, again, only positive numbers. Or there could be a number that breaks like rational, so you can't have a zero in the denominator. Okay. <clears throat> For today, we're just going to focus on what is a function and what is not a function. A function has to be one-to-one. -one. This is its main difference between function and equation. Function, there should only be one x for one y value. Oh yeah, I remember this. Now the analogy I like, like to use is a printer. I'm trying to print out something, like an image, right? What happens if I put two sheets of paper in at the same time? Then you're gonna get two answers. No. no. One's oh, gonna be whoa, whoa, whoa. Yeah, one's gonna be, you're gonna get like a paper jam, right? Yeah. So you yeah. cannot have an x value that equals two different y values. <laughs> like if I have one sheet of paper and I'm trying to print two images, it breaks, right? It's like, well, which one do you want to print? You can only have one y, for each sheet of paper. Can you have multiple sheet of, sheets of printouts? Yes. Can you print the same thing multiple times? Yes. Yeah, of course you can. So I can have multiple outputs of the same number, but I should only have one X value <laughs> per printout. Does that make sense? Absolutely. <clears throat> Let's look at these sets and try to use our printer analogy. So I have an image I'm printing. I have a sheet of paper. Goes to the printer, prints out this image one. I have another sheet of paper, I hit print, 
prints out image two. Another sheet of paper prints image three. Notice how this is a machine that just input, output, input, output. This is a function. Do you see anything breaking here? Mm -hmm. No. So this kind of set works. I have one value here that relates to just one value on this side. <clears throat> That's not a function right there. This is a function. <laughs> that one literally says function <laughs> under it. Other, Hold on. Shut, shut up. I'm talking about the one at the bottom. No, it says no function. So right here, like I said, can you print the same image out multiple times? Yes. Yes. That's what's going on here. I have three sheets of paper, and I ask to print out three different copies. That's okay. So this sheet, sheet of paper runs through, prints out image one. Paper two runs through, prints out image one. That's what I was talking about, the bottom one, the one under. <laughs> yeah. You put in one, one and you get two separate answers. Put in a sheet of paper three, prints out image one. That's okay. So this is allowed to be a function where you have print out the same sheet of paper multiple times. I'm not. It's okay if we don't use images. So it's okay if we don't use values for y. Now down here, these are examples of not a function. So this machine, I have a piece of paper and I'm printing out image one. I have a sheet of paper and I'm printing out image two. I ran out of paper. What happens? No image. No image, right? It breaks. Oh no. So notice how this is missing a value. I have some value for x that does not have a value for y. So that is not a function. In order to make this a function, this needs to be either one, two, or three. So this would be an example of, I guess, running out of paper. Every X must have a value. <clears throat> yes. And then here, like you said, this is similar to like a double feed. Paper jam, right? Mm -hmm. Or if you're telling a printer to print out two different images, but you only have one sheet of paper. That's hey, I'm which one are you going to print? One or two? Well, oops. It can't. It can only print one. So this is breaks. You can't have one... Oops. You can't have one value for x with multiple images on it. This is not a function. This is okay. You can print the same thing out multiple times, but you cannot print out two things on one sheet of paper. <clears throat> and you have to have a value for every x. So as far as mm -hmm. a table or chart, this is what a function and not a function looks like. As far as graphing, Here's how you tell if something's a function based on its graph. We use what's called the vertical line test. Ah, uh, if it touches more this. than once, then it's not a function. Yes, exactly. So with this snake here, as I go from left to right, I'm only hitting that graph once. Yeah. So that is a function. Only one value for x for each y. Here, as I land right here, I notice I have how many different values for x? Two. Two, Two right? Here yeah. and here. You're trying to print this. You're probably trying to print two images on one sheet of paper. Can't happen, so it breaks. This is not a function. That one's all the way across. And then this one, yeah. There's a reason why circles aren't one of our parent functions. Is because a circle is not a function. It also fails the vertical line test. In this activity, you will be exploring domain and range. In one sentence, explain what domain and range mean to you. So the domain looks like it's the set of all what. Values. X values. X values. Very good. I remember I put, I don't remember some stuff on number. Yeah, I remember yeah. like a little song for it. Oh, the domain, domain is the XX and the domain is the, oh, the range is the YY, something like that. No, there's something, uh, there's something else. I don't know, I don't remember. I don't remember Miss Mooney. Yeah, Miss Mooney. Yeah, I don't remember what she, she, I've heard, I heard it last, somebody said it, said it last year, but I don't remember what it, she was, what it was, so. She was a rat. Maybe we can find something on YouTube. <laughs> I remember oh whenever she was going. So I know there was like a Beyonce one. To the left, to the left, to the right, to the right. Everything from the domain to the left, to the right. No. 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 Yeah, well, whatever. Domain. The set of all x values. So you need to tell me what is my lowest value or my farthest part in my graph to the left and the largest value, x value, on the right. Essentially, I'm trying to box in my graph from left to right. So it would be negative 3 and 1. <clears throat> negative 3 and 1. The domain, I'm sorry, the range is a set of all y values. I want to see what is my lowest point and what is my highest point. Essentially, I'm trying to box in my graph from bottom to top. Looks like it's going from negative 4 to 0. I don't get this one. I like this activity because it gives you a visual of what we're trying to accomplish. Notice as I move my graph, the shaded region follows it. That's because our whole goal is to encompass this entire graph within this 
orange region from left to right. This is my domain. My domain will never, my graph will never be outside this orange region. <clears throat> One thing I want to bring up about open and closed circles here is that a closed circle represents not equal to. So with not equal to, you would not use this equal sign here, like B and D. <clears throat> and this closed circle means equal to. So you would use an equal sign here. So as I look at this example, my graph is going from negative 5 to 3. That is my region here with the orange. Negative 5 has an open circle, so I'm not equal to negative 5. So it can't be B or D. It's got to be A or C. And it goes all the way to 3 with the closed circle. So it is equal to 3. So I am looking for an equal sign, so it's either B or C. Which one did I say twice? It's either A or C or B and C. I said, the far left side is either A or C. Right side is either B or C. So which one is it? Oh, C. C, yeah. It's going from negative 5 without that equal sign all the way to 3 with the equal sign because of the open and closed circle. So that is the domain. And with the range, we're looking at the y value. Likewise, I'm trying to box in my graph from bottom to top. Notice none of my graph is ever outside this shaded green region. Always within it. <clears throat> so as I look at this example, I'm trying to find the domain and range. We'll start with the domain. Is that X or Y? Well, uh, domain is Y. The Wait, no, X, X, X. It's going across. Domain is X. It's going from left to right. So what is the farthest left value? Negative 2. The farthest right value? 1. Now, none of my graph is either to the left or to the right of my shaded orange region. Why? That's the domain. The yeah. range is the Y. What is my lowest value? Negative 3. What is my highest value? 3. Again, none of my graph is below the green or above the green. I boxed in the range. And together, no part of this graph is either outside the green or the orange. It is completely inside the green-orange area. That's our whole goal with the domain range, to get this. <clears throat> it completely boxed in. One more thing I want to bring up, and that's this one right here. Aaron says the range of the graph on the left is going from negative 10.8 to negative 1.2. He made an error. What is the correct range for this function? So let's look. He says it's going from negative 10.8. So the lowest point in this graph is negative 10.8. Uh, do you see any point of the graph below my ruler? No. No. So the, range, the bottom part of my range is correct. correct. He says it tops out at negative 1.2. Is any part of my graph above the ruler? No. Well, yes, yes. Yes. So obviously this is not the top That's of my range. range. What he did was the endpoints. Range is not your endpoints, it is the lowest point and the highest point. To correct it, he would put what? Origin. Origin or zero, yes. Zero. He would put zero.